George is storming back for those 20 fourth quarter points. Three touchdowns in about seven minutes. Bennett responding after the fumble with a tremendous throw and catch. And then the pick six to Sealy. And one more play for the Georgia defense. Georgia on the mountaintop. Demons be gone and the drought is over. National champions at long last. And now it's my privilege to present on behalf of the conferences and schools that managed the college football playoff, the national championship trophy to coach Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. There's gonna be some property torn up in Indianapolis tonight, baby! Emergency edition of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I got a sauced up cousin Shane on the line. <laughs> what are you up to, you big Tennessee Homer? <laughs> hey, buddy, what's going on? Man, defense. what a game. Defense. <laughs> we are recording what moments a game. after Georgia just won their first night national championships since 19 mm-hmm. friggin 80 shame by beating alabama 33 18 in a game that was i the score was nine to six at halftime it was a damn snoozer Did you see old jimbo jimbo was falling asleep <laughs> in the coach's room there but uh man things really started to heat up there in the second half and georgia finally got that monkey off their back beat nick saban beat the crimson tide how about it shane Brother, brother, I tell you what, it was, you know, the monkey's off the back. You know what I'm saying? It's been mm-hmm. 1980. I was looking up the number one hit in 1980, and it was some song by Blondie that I've never heard of. <laughs> you know, it's like, I in my lifetime, I have never seen Georgia win a national championship. It, it's so funny because I got a lot of Tennessee buddies that had to delete 1980 text, you know, <laughs> just because they were saving it up for after this game, and it did not happen. The king went down. Nick Saban lost to his uh, predecessor, you know. It was – and I'm watching this game at half, Mike, and I can't help but think it's a 1990s high school football game. It was all <laughs> about running. It was all about defense. You know, I could hear a lot of them blue hairs were happy that football was back, baby. But it was a hell of an – I mean, it was probably one of the best national championship games I've seen in my lifetime. Yeah, going back to something you said on the last game, you were kind of poking fun of the Bengals for not having a playoff win since, <laughs> you know, there was no text messages. I was thinking about that today, Shane. <laughs> I mean, the college football, we now have the Golden Trophy. Before that, we mm-hmm. had the Crystal Football, you know, they used to hold up. I mean, Georgia, it's been two trophies since Georgia's captured one. I mean, that's how long it's been. So, you know, like we were saying on the last episode, this sets up Georgia now to to be on equal footing with Alabama, Mm -hmm. Clemson, LSU, you know, just all these other Ohio State, any program that's won it here recently and poised to win many more in the years to come potentially. So, but you had to get that first one, Shane, before you believe it. Got because to. this was yeah. the thing. It was it was every day of the year we got to hear about the Georgia offseason hype. And we were, we were as guilty as everybody because, hey, they mm-hmm. got the talent. They got the facilities. They got the fan base. Yeah. They have all the pieces. But until now, they were able to get it done. And, man, what a friggin' game here. And, uh, you know, credit Stetson Bennett, man, for stepping up. And oh, so many doubters. Own. But, hey, Georgia was down late in this ballgame, Shane. And – Georgia came strolling back, and they, and they basically dominated the fourth quarter. That's, you know, that was the big theme of the, of the last show. Georgia's got to find a way to finish, and that's what they did here, and that's why they're the national champions. Brother, it was – I mean, I think that was the best part was the – and I, you got to remember, I'm a Tennessee Vol fan, right? Mm-hmm. I, I It's just I, I am an outsider looking in, and – but I appreciated the moment. And after that pick six, and you see Stets in the mailman just mm-hmm. bawling his eyes out. I mean, how can you not love this story? A, a, a walk on that, yeah. that could never get the opportunity to be a quarterback. 
leaves the university only to come back as a backup. They go out. I'm looking at I'm looking at you, JT, with that little mustache running on the sideline. <laughs> I was telling Mike before the show, we wasted so much time talking about him when the real quarterback was Stetson Bennett. And, you know, he wasn't he didn't play his best game, but he did just enough to help Georgia Bulldogs win their first national championship since 1980. But I'm going to tell you, Mike, the stars of the show had to be on the defensive side. I mean, how many opportunities did Alabama have to put this game away? Mm -hmm. They had opportunities, but this defense was a bend-not-break mentality, and it was freaking awesome, dude. I mean, it was just – I can't – I mean, this is – I'm going to be watching this game multiple times because it was one of the best football games, just football games, that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Shane, because – you know, I wanted to point out, yes, it was 9-6. to six. It, You know, some consider that a boring game, but oftentimes that's because the offenses suck, and that was not the case in this one. It was more of a case of these uh-huh. defenses stepping up, making plays. I mean, Will Anderson uh-huh. off the edge for Alabama was just a nightmare like he always is. But uh, you hit the nail on the head there, Shane. The defense for the Georgia Bulldogs, Lewis Seen was just a, a wrecking ball in the, in the defensive backfield. We had uh, Nolan Smith, Quay Walker, Channing Tindall, all with seven or eight tackles for the Georgia Bulldogs. It was Ringo with the pick six. Christopher Smith had another interception in this game. Nakobe Dean was all over the field. They were batting balls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, Shane, uh, I hate, you know, you hate to blame it on injuries, but Jamison Williams going down for Alabama suffered a Mm -hmm. knee injury. That was, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, a difference maker in the game. And then, here in the fourth, Alabama's young corners, they had, they were down a couple of guys, again, due to injury. Uh, they kind of got exposed a little bit here, Shane, and there was personal foul, uh, uh, defensive pass interference on those guys. They were getting beat. The A.D. Mitchell, 40-yard touchdown, what a play that was. And, you know, if there's any weakness on the field, these two teams, they're going to smell that blood in the water. And I don't think Alabama had any, you know, they got five stars out there, but – inexperienced yeah. five stars are going to get you killed in a game like this at uh, at a position as important as cornerback. And that was really the difference in the game. And it, I said, hey, the fourth quarter dominated by Georgia. Shane, 20 to 9, Georgia won mm-hmm. that uh, margin there in the fourth quarter. And, and I believe, uh, yeah, it was 9 to 13 going into the fourth quarter. <laughs> so that just gives you an idea of the flurry of points we had there in the fourth quarter. And Man, I I just th- I'm I'm glad this game lived up to the hype. You know what? <laughs> yeah, me too, man. I mean, I'm I was at a Chris or a Christmas party. I I'm sorry, I've been drinking. Uh, there's like a <laughs> event we're at right now, and they're doing all this stuff, and and I'm the only one sitting over there watching this game. You know, and I just I couldn't get enough of it, and it was just back and back trading blows, and and I think about when I'm when I'm kind of like I don't know. I may want to pause this for a second. Let me get my thoughts here. <laughs> when, uh, when I guess what got me, Mike, was that fumble. You know, right. I, how many? There seems like when these two teams meet, there's always that one or two things that happen during a game that Georgia just can't bounce back from, and it felt like this was another similar story. When mm-hmm. that slowed it down, there was a fumble, and the guy barely. Got, you know, I mean, it was just. All right, this is it. This is when Alabama takes the lead and takes over, you know. But they didn't. They didn't pack their bags. They 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 stuck in there and they were able to bounce back. I think that's that's what the growing up that they did from the SEC championship to this moment right here. They were ready, man. These guys were ready. You saw it at the start when Jordan Davis was out there, even doing the coin toss. You could tell he was ready to kill somebody. You know, it's just. Right. These guys came out with the mission, and they never stopped. They just trust the system and and came away with a victory. And And I think that's what's the difference. We always waited for that moment when Alabama would just take this game away and Georgia just would not allow them. Yeah, and that play Shane was referencing, if you missed it, you probably everybody listening did see it. But, you know, it looked almost like a fluke play. It looked like the players mm-hmm. on the field kind of quit. 
you know, credit the refs. We don't give we don't, we love calling out the refs when they make a mistake, but <laughs> you know, I credit them for letting it play out. And I, and I actually think they got the right call. I mean, it was very, very, very close. But you know, I do think Stetson Bennett was losing the ball. Uh, his arm did go forward, but just because he's you know has the ball in his hand doesn't mean he's possessing it. And then the Alabama player that scooped it up. I mean, it was one of those where he was walking out of bounds. I mean. Had he known it was a fumble, he probably could have scored a touchdown. You know what I mean? But <laughs> Alabama got gets it there within uh, within the red zone there, scores a, the go-ahead touchdown. And you're right, Shane. I mean, for Georgia to finally have a lead here in this game, they've been battling, and then this is how they lose the lead. It, it just felt like, <laughs> oh, God, here's the oh, shit moment for the Georgia Bulldogs. They're yep. not going to recover. And then what do they do? They come right immediately back, Shane, four plays, 75-yard touchdown drive, and then they back that up with a seven-play, 62-yard touchdown drive. And, yeah. man, that that was all she wrote. And, you know, one other thing I wanted to mention here, because it was critical in the game, Shane, Alabama, they moved the ball fairly well in this football game. They, they got mm-hmm. it into the red zone four times, but they only converted one touchdown on those four drives, wow. including one was first and goal from the one. They couldn't punch it in. And – you know, I guess a team this good, you know, credit Georgia's defense, but Alabama, that's where you lost the game really is, is not converting there in the red zone. You, you convert two more of those. You may, maybe a different story here in this ball game. Maybe Bryce Young is, is, uh, you know, going for the win here uh, instead of throwing a pick six. Saban is so mad right now, Mike, you know, just like Shane, he is not getting any sleep tonight. He's going to sit down there by the fire pit. He's going to burn that damn leather jacket. He is, he is on. I, I, I mean, the opportunities that Alabama had, like you said, I mean, on the one yard line. This that's not typical for Alabama. But when you're facing what I think is the greatest defense to ever play college football, you know, it, it, it reared its ugly head there in the national championship game these guys like i said they came out with a mission and they were the victors on the on the pressure that they were able to get on young all night long and it wasn't the sacks and i know uh herb street talked about it quite a bit during this game but it was just the constant pressure when Mm -hmm. you do that all game long and then you get to the end and when it's crunch time you're going to make mistakes when you have to force the ball and that's what happened and that's why we had the pick six so that those little things throughout the game, it was just great management. It was great job. I, I you got to give this defense credit yet again. Um, and, and and don't get me wrong, Alabama played great too, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They had Stetson running around like crazy. I think he was rattled most of the mm-hmm. game. But you know, it was one of those things. Once they finally got a little breather, a little room. They took advantage of it, and this running game just took over. Georgia Bulldogs did what Georgia does, run the ball, play good defense, and it won them a national championship. And I I know these guys are on cloud nine. I can only imagine what it's like being a Georgia fan right now. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagine just, I'm the be barking to going tw- on in Indianapolis <laughs> right now. You know what? I tell you what. I know all the bandwagon fans just sticking. <laughs> they're at Walmart right now getting their little Gs to put on their cars, you know. I'm going to see a Kia tomorrow with a big old Georgia Bulldog. And I'm like, man, that looks a little too fresh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the bandwagon fans are coming out, so – and, and it's time, man. It's time. And, and I love it because I don't get me wrong, man. I, I, what, what Nick Saban has done down there in Alabama is not, I mean, it's just, he's the greatest coach ever and, right. and he's not leaving. They're going to probably win a national championship next year. So <laughs> just hang on tide fans. You got one more off season to go through, but what, what Georgia did to me right here, Mike, was they just equal, they, it's like the playing field got a little bit more even. And and I think that's better for the sport. We're adding Oklahoma. We're adding Texas. The teams are closer, it feels like. I mean, you, you had Alabama lose to Texas A&M. And, and I know that sounds stupid that, that we can celebrate just one victory against your team. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's huge to me, man. I think this is just the next chapter of college football that, you know, all those years of recruiting and everything that Kirby's done down there, it's just, you know, I'm not saying Georgia's going to run away and win 10 years in a row like Alabama has, 
but I think they're starting to even the playing field, which just helps college football, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Shane, because that was my next thing I was going to ask you because, yep, Alabama probably going to open the season number one with uh, Bryce Mm -hmm. Young and Will Anderson and company all coming back, and they deserve – you know, and who knows, they're probably going to add some marquee transfer portal additions. So they ain't going away. But, you know, you just look at the season they just had, Shane, multiple close losses here. And they lost to Jimbo Fisher. They lost to, to mm-hmm. Kirby Smart. He beat uh, Lane Kiffin. He beat Kirby the first time. So he right. was two, two and two against former assistants. But, <laughs> you know, it feels kind of like you're saying where it's almost like, it doesn't feel like the tide are quite as invincible, and, and it feels like the rest of the SEC is kind of rising as the time. Again, Alabama's going to be number one. They're not falling very far, but they just don't look like the juggernaut that they have been, do they? No, uh, and that's that's my my thing is is I want to watch college football, and I, I, I know it's tough because most of the people that are listening to this podcast are a Georgia fan or an Alabama fan, mm-hmm. but – as a fan of a school that's not those two teams, it's just kind of a fresh breath of air. Or is that how you say that? Breath, mm-hmm. fresh breath of air. like. Sorry, I'm. I'm I, seriously. I'm about ten in, Mike. <laughs> just clean me up here. <laughs> I just, you know, it's just I. I like watching games on Saturday and not knowing who's going to win. You know, for so many games, Alabama just shows up and you could just mark the box, okay? They're going to walk away with a victory here. But when you start having some of these games where they're not favored, you got to remember, Vegas did not have Alabama win in this game. They favored Georgia. We How many times has that happened since Nick Saban's won a national, his first national championship down there? It just didn't happen. So it's just, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of refreshing. And, and I know it. I, it's hard as a Tide fan, because you've got a lot invested in this season. But – and, and, and too, you should have won – I'm not going to lie. There's times you probably should have won this game. But Georgia was the victor. And, and and for as bad as I feel for Tide fans, I'm that much more happy for, for Georgia Bulldog fans. For somebody that – I mean, think about that, Mike. I'm 39 years old, man. I've never seen Georgia win a national championship. So I can only imagine – being so close, you know, you think the Mark Rick years, you think of some of these Kirby smart teams, it's just mm-hmm. you've had opportunities to make it to the big dance and win this thing, and you've been in national championships, but you just never have made it over that hump, and they were able to do it this year. So you deserve it, Georgia. Man, it was a fucking great year. I I, I mean, short of the SEC championship, it's almost flawless season, uh, what they've been able to put together down there. So – sponge it up enjoy the parades man this is your off season <laughs> well absolutely shane i think that's a great place to end the show here get you back to the poolside bar and go celebrate you oh with, yeah uh, let me know if you find any georgia fans <laughs> out there kick back some cold ones with them mike you know what the best part is it is 9 23 <laughs> i mean i watched the national championship i've done a podcast and i still got a few hours left in me baby <laughs> <laughs> well not me brother oh, i'm gonna get this man. thing up then i'm gonna hit the hay and, and see what the buzz is in the morning so i do appreciate you shane with the emergency podcast uh several cores back kicked back here i could tell but uh, i do appreciate you shane and congratulations georgia you waited a long long time for this one yeah and it's, it's the first one that's the best yeah i know it's not your first but for a large portion of your fan base it is so soak it up <laughs> enjoy it you got Man, that's the greatest thing. If you're a Georgia fan, you got uh, eight months here of bragging rights. You know what? So uh, Absolutely. take advantage of, of the, uh, every second of it. Absolutely, man. And a lot of a lot of them reaching out, thinking, thanking God that I that I chose Alabama to win this thing. <laughs> you know, so uh, for those that are wondering how they could pay it forward, you know, just get on there and give us a five star rating. <laughs> Find an iPhone tomorrow and thank me because I'm a hundred dollars down right now. I'm broke, man. Everybody thinks everybody makes fun of these these selections I make, man. I'm going I am going to the poor house if I keep picking these. But <laughs> hey, Mike, it was a hell of a season. Uh, I, I I couldn't think of a better way to 
close it out with you, gang, and uh, appreciate everybody that's 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 hung out with us. All I mean, I've I've talked to listeners that's been there since day one, and we've talked to some that just found us two weeks ago. You mm-hmm. know, word of mouth, you, you you get it out there, it helps us out. We we look at growing. Uh, next year we're all video, believe it or not. Big cousin Uh-oh. Shane's gonna. Yeah, that's right, man. I'm going to have a sufficient internet. <laughs> we'll be back in our, our new spot and uh, working on the podcast. Uh, so it's it, we're, we're looking for a next big chapter here. And that push wouldn't have happened without you guys. So uh, appreciate everything. Appreciate you, Mike, cleaning me up here. I know you're going to be up all night editing this yet. But uh, uh, I appreciate you, brother. And and uh, go go dogs, man. Good, good job, man. I, I just I, – I, I wish I won, you know. I, I remember back in 98, and I'm not going to try to go down memory lane, but it's a special moment when you win a national championship. And I think I wish every SEC team would have that opportunity because it is it is truly special, and, and you always go back. I mean, even if Georgia falls off the face of the earth, we're going to talk about the 2021 Georgia Bulldog team. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, just like we did the 98 balls. So uh, <laughs> just enjoy it, sponge it up, and uh, – it's been a fun run, Mike, and I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate all the fans. We'll catch you on the next one. All right. See you guys. Go dogs.